till last class the control and circuit uh, the control circuit unit that we have discussed that is called hardware control unit because all the control signals are generated by hardware circuit now there is another way of generating the control signals and that is called a microprogrammed control unit so in case of microprogrammed control unit the control signals instead of being generated by hardware circuit it is generated through software and because these control signals are generated through software this is more flexible okay so now let us see how you can generate the control signals through software so we have said during our previous discussion that uh, once you design the hardware resources within the cpu for every hardware resource you can determine that what are the control signals that will be required okay so in our hardware control unit when we have discussed we have said that during <coughs> time state t0 the operation that was performed was the memory address register gets the content of the program counter then during time interval t1 or machine state t1 what we had done is instruction register gets the value from memory whose address is in the memory address register okay and at the same time the program counter is incremented by 1 okay and during t3 sorry t2 the content of the instruction register is decoded okay so what we do is we decode the instruction register content okay so these are the operations that were done during the machine states t0 to t2 okay and we have also said that simultaneously what we have done is we have loaded the memory address register with the lower 12 bits of the instruction <coughs> register that is supposed to hold the operand address in memory if it is a memory reference instruction okay so if i consider only these three machine states you find that the controls that are involved is for memory address register we have to have the load control input of the memory address register okay so i have load of memory address register i have the control input output enable of the program counter so both of these control signals are to be activated during machine state t0 okay then for the instruction register we have to have load instruction register then because we have to perform a memory read operation so we have to activate the read control signal which will go to the memory and the program counter is incremented so for the program counter we have to activate the increment control signal okay so these are the control signals which are to be activated during machine state t1 okay similarly during machine state t2 we said that decoder is a combinational logic circuit so for that we don't need any control signal to be activated okay the moment instruction register is loaded with the opcode of the instruction the decoder starts working and the output of the decoder will be available after few gate delays right but for the memory address register when it is getting loaded 
from the instruction register, we have to again activate the load control input of the memory address register. And we also have to act activate the output enable control signal of the instruction register. So, these are the control signals that are to be activated during time step T2. Okay. So, in case of hardware control circuit, what we have done is we have ensured generation of these control signals in this proper sequence by making use of the instruction decoder and the sequence counter. Okay. Now, there is another way of generating these control signals. That is, given the architecture and the hardware resources that you have in the architecture, you identify total number of control signals that are required. Okay. So, for the given circuit, if we say that the number of control signals that will be required if number of control signals is equal to say n. Okay. Then we can generate these control signals in the given sequence, in the required sequence by having a memory whose every location will contain n number of bits. Okay. So, a control signal C i will be represented by the ith bit in a memory location. Okay. So, since we are assuming that we are having a memory where every location in the memory will contain n number of bits. So, every bit I can use to represent a control signal. Okay. So, when ith bit is equal to 0 in a particular memory location and when that memory location is read, the control signal C i will not be activated. Whereas, if ith bit equal to 1 and I read that particular location in the memory, then control signal C i will be generated. Okay. So, accordingly, for each of these control signals, I can associate every control signal with a corresponding bit in a memory location and read the memory locations in the desired sequence. So, as you read in read the memory locations in desired sequence, you will find that the desired control signals will also be generated in the desired sequence. Okay. And the total architecture <coughs> of such a microprogrammed control unit will be something like this. So, for storing this control signals, I need a memory. Okay. So, in this case, the memory is called a control memory because it is storing the control signals. Once I want to read a particular location in the control memory, then I must have a register which tells you what is the address in the control memory that is to be read. So, for that what we use is a control memory address register. So, we have a control memory address register or CMAR. Okay. Control memory address register provides the location address where from this control memory is to be read. Okay. Then output of that particular location I can load into another register <coughs> and 
Okay. A part of this will give you the control signals. So, this is the control signals and we call this field in the memory location as control field or CF. Okay. And within this memory, there are other locations which can be divided in other fields. Okay. For the simple <coughs> architecture, let us assume that this field gives you the branch address or the next address in the control memory that is to be read. So, we assume that every in every location, whenever I put the control signals that are to be put in that particular location, in addition to that, we also put that what is the next address of the control memory location that will be read after execution of the micro operations initiated by these control signals. Okay. So, this branch address because this is the next location in the control memory that has to be read, I must have a provision for giving back this branch address to the control memory address register. I should also have a provision of loading some address from the external source to the control memory address register. Why that is needed? Because whenever a new instruction is to be executed, for the first three time states, machine states, the operations are identical. But after that, the micro operations that are to be performed depends upon the, upon the instruction that is going to be executed. Okay. So, I must have an external resource generator or address generator, which after decoding the instruction identifies the location in the control memory from where the required control signals will be obtained. Okay. So, on this side, I have to have a multiplexer. Okay. One of the inputs to the multiplexer is the branch address, which comes from the control memory location itself. Okay. The other input to the multiplexer comes from the address generator or external address generator. <coughs> so, I call it external address generator. So, this external address generator will generate the address depending upon the instruction that is to be <coughs> that is going to be executed. Okay. So, I have one input to the multiplexer as the branch address, which is provided within the control <coughs> memory location itself and the other input to the multiplexer comes from the external address generator okay. and this address is loaded into the control memory address register. Okay. I must also have a selection mechanism or the select input to the multiplexer, which will decide whether the address that is going to be loaded in the control memory address register should be loaded from the external address generator or it should be loaded from the branch address provided within the control memory itself. Okay. So, for that what we done is within the same control memory location, I put a 1 bit field. Let us call it a mode field or m bit. Okay. And our logic will be that whenever this m bit is equal to 0, the address will be taken from the external address generator. If it is equal to 1, then address will be taken from the branch address field of the control memory location. So, this is the one which will be used when m is equal to 1 and this one will be loaded into control memory address register when m equal to 0. Okay. So, this will be the overall architecture of a microprogram <coughs> control unit, where the control signals are encoded within the control memory itself. 
and this can be a ROM. Okay. So, by analysis of the instructions, you decide that how many control signals are needed and in which sequence all the control signals will be generated. So, accordingly, you program this ROM so that every location will contain control signals which are to be generated simultaneously. Okay. Now, in this architecture, all the components except the control memory. So, this is the one which is called the control memory. So, all the components except the control memory take part in deciding the next location in the control memory that is to be read. Okay. So, all those components are called as microprogram sequencer. So, this whole thing multiplexer, control memory address register, then this output register, all these taken together becomes a microprogram sequencer and the microprogram sequencer along with the control memory becomes the entire microprogrammed control unit. Okay. Now, to let us, now let us see that how these control signals that is needed for our purpose can be generated to this microprogram control unit. Okay. So, <coughs> as we said that for execution of the instructions in our machine, we need the control signals during T0 to T2, we need control signals load memory address register, output enable of the program counter, load instruction register, read memory, increment program counter, load memory address register again, these are identical, then output enable of the instruction register. Okay. So, let us call these, associate these control signals with some bits in the control memory. Okay. So, let me say that load memory address register, load memory address register that is associated with bit number C0, that is the 0th bit in the control memory. Okay. Output enable of the program counter, that is associated with <coughs> bit number 1 in the control memory or C1, then load instruction register is associated with <coughs> bit number C2 in the control memory, then read <coughs> control signal for memory is associated with C3 in the control memory. Okay. Then we have program counter increment that is associated with bit number C4 in the control memory, then load memory address register is already considered, then what we need is output enable <coughs> of instruction register is associated with bit number C5 in the control memory. <coughs> okay. So, if I put these control signals in different control memories consecutively. Okay. So, I assume that starting from the 0th location in the control memory, the control signals that will be stored are the control signals which are common for all the instructions. Okay. That means, the control signals that are required during the machine states T0, T1 and T2. Okay. So, let me put it this way that I put control signal C0 here, C1 here, C2, C3, 
थ्री सी फोर एंड सी फाइव ओके सो दीज आर दीज आर द कंट्रोल सिग्नल दैट आर रिक्वायर्ड टिल नाउ ओके देन ड्यूरिंग टाइम स्टेट टी जीरो द कंट्रोल सिग्नल दैट आर रिक्वायर्ड आर आउटपुट एनेबल ऑफ प्रोग्राम काउंटर एंड लोड मेमोरी एड्रेस रजिस्टर ओके सो वी हैव सेड दैट लोड मेमोरी एड्रेस रजिस्टर इज एसोसिएटेड विथ बिट नंबर सी जीरो ओके सो इन द जीरो लोकेशन आई विल पुट सी जीरो इक्वल टू वन बिकॉज दैट इज द कंट्रोल सिग्नल दैट इज रिक्वायर्ड ड्यूरिंग टाइम स्टेट टी जीरो एंड आई हैव टू हैव आउटपुट एनेबल ऑफ प्रोग्राम काउंटर बिकॉज प्रोग्राम काउंटर इज लोडेड इन टू कंट्रोल मेमोरी एड्रेस रजिस्टर सो आउटपुट एनेबल ऑफ प्रोग्राम काउंटर हुई चीज एसोसिएटेड विथ बिथ नंबर सी वन सो आई ऑल्सो सेट सी वन इक्वल टू वन ओके रेस्ट ऑफ द बेट्स आर इक्वल टू जीरो बिकॉज आई डोंट नीड दीज कंट्रोल सिग्नल्स ड्यूरिंग मेशीन स्टेट टी जीरो ओके then during machine state t1 the control signals that are required is load instruction register which is associated with bit number c2 okay so i said c2 equal to 1 in the next control memory location okay and i also need read control signal of the memory which is associated with bit number c3 so i said c3 equal to 1 because these are the control signals which are to be generated simultaneously and at the same time the program counter is to be incremented by 1 so increment of the program counter which is associated with bit number c4 that is to be that also is to be activated during time state t1 so i also said <coughs> c4 equal to 1 okay the remaining memory locations are Uh, the remaining bits are set to zero okay then during time state t2 the control signals that is required are output enable of the instruction register which is associated with bit number c5 so i set c5 is equal to 1 okay and i also need load of the memory address register to be activated which is associated with bit number c0 so i also set c0 equal to 1 so these are the two control signals which will be generated when you read this particular memory location and the remaining bits in that particular location are set to zero okay so you find that initially when you power on the machine the first operation that is to be performed is an opcode fetch okay so if i ensure that whenever the machine is powered on or whenever the machine is reset the control memory address register will also be reset to zero so that ensures that just after switching on the machine or just after resetting the machine the micro program control unit will start generating control signals from the zeroth location in the control memory that means the first control signals it will generate are C zero control signals associated with C zero and C one, which are nothing but load memory address register and output enable of the program counter. So program count from the program counter, the address goes to memory address register. Okay. Now in addition to this, we also have said that every location in the control memory will have two more fields. One is the next address field, where from the next control signals are to be read. and it also have a field one bit field which is the mode uh, the address select field okay so i'll put in along with this in the same locations the next address fields within the control memory address register okay so here you find that after generating this control signals the next control signals are to be generated from the next memory location within the memory okay which is memory location 1 so i put the next memory location in few more bits i put it as 0 1 right now i am putting it in decimal form 
but this has to be coded into binary and the number of bits required in binary form that has to be used. Okay. For simplicity, I am putting this as decimal number. Right? So, after execution of this, the next address is 1 that is the this particular location in the control memory. So, after generation of these control signals, next time the control signals will be generated are C4, C3 and C2 and C4, C3, C2 means increment program counter, read memory and load instruction register. Okay. So, after these control signals are generated, the next control signals are to be read from the third location in the control memory. So, I again put in the next address field as 0 2. So, you find that I am putting in the decimal form. Okay. Now, after this third memory location is read and these control signals are generated, that means I have already read in the instruction okay, and the instruction opcode is there in the instruction register. After that, the instructions are to be decoded and depending upon the decoder output, the control signals are to be generated and that is the actual execution phase of the instruction. Okay. So, during execution phase, as we have said, the address has to come from the external address generator. So, this address cannot be specified within the control memory itself. Okay. So, whatever I put in this branch address location, that is the material because the address now is to be generated by the external source. <coughs> okay. But for that, what you have to do is, we have to set the mode field accordingly. Okay. So, as we have said that whenever mode field is set to 1, the next address is taken from the next address field of the program counter, uh, of the control memory. If the next, if the mode field is set to 0, then the next address is taken from the external address generator. So, I have to set the mode fields accordingly. So, what I will do is, I will put the mode field here as 1, because after execution of this, the next address will be this branch address field. Here also, I set mode field equal to 1, because after generating these control signals, the next mem control memory which is to be read is this one and these control signals are to be generated. But after this, the address has to come from the external address generator. So, I set mode field to 0 here. Okay. So, this is the branch address field. and this is the <coughs> mode field in the control register. Right? So, after doing this, if I assume, so the instruction that has been faced is nothing but say move R1 comma R2 instruction. Okay. So, if it is move R1 comma R2 instruction, then during time state T3, what are the control signals that we have to generate? One is output enable of register R2 okay. and the other control signal that is to be generated is load of R1. Okay. So, I can have two more bits for to be associated with these control signals. Okay. So, let me say C6 is the bit which is associated with output enable of R2 and say C7 is the bit which is associated with load of R1. Okay. So, accordingly, I will have bits C6, I will also have bits C7. Okay. And suppose when this is uh, decoded, the external address generator that generates an address, uh, let us give a logical level, say address L. 
L can have any value. Okay. So, the logical address that is generated is address L. Okay. So, the control signals that will be required during T3 for execution of this instruction move R1, R2 must start from location L in the control memory. Okay. So, suppose this is location L in the control memory. Okay. So, in this location, what I have to put? Because I have to generate C6 and C7, C7, so these two bits have to be made equal to 1 and the rest of the bits will be equal to 0. Okay. So, I will set in location L, C7 equal to 1, I will also set C6 equal to 1, the rest of the bits will be equal to 0 because these control signals will not be required. during T3 while execution of this move R1, R2 instruction. Okay. And what will be the status of the other bits? Once this instruction is executed, <coughs> then I have to go back to instruction fetch cycle, that means time state T0. And for time state T0 onwards, the opcodes are stored starting from location 0. Okay. So, that means, in the branch address location, I have to put the address <coughs> 0, 0 and the mode field has to be made equal to 1. So, I set the mode field equal to 1. Okay. And in these cases, these bits will also be 0, because these control signals will not be generated during these machine states. Okay. So, you find that after generating these control signals, this execution of the instruction move R1, R2 is complete. Okay. So, after completing execution of this instruction, the control memory address register will be loaded with value 0, 0 because the mode field I have set to 1. Okay. And as the control memory address register is loaded with value 0, 0, the next address in the control memory that will be read is this one. And here I generate the control signals C1 and C0 which are meant for load memory address register and output enable of the program counter. Okay. That means, I am going back to next instruction fetch cycle okay? and these things will repeat and next time this L, the value of L will depend upon which instruction has been fetched and put into instruction register and the decoder, instruction decoder will decide the value of L. Okay. So, this is how I can write a software, so I can put it this way that this is nothing but a software for execution of this instruction itself. Okay. So, I have a set of assembly language instructions for execution of a program and every instruction itself is executed by a program which I call as a micro program. Okay. So, you find that for this simple situation move R1, R2, the micro program was a single micro instruction. So, this I can call as a micro instruction. So, it is a single micro instruction. Whereas, for execution of some other programs, maybe I need more than one micro instruction. I think we had taken some such example where you need more than one. Yeah. The example that we had taken is add one of the instructions that we had is add R1. Okay. In add R1, the micro operations that are to be done is during time machine state T3, the content of R1 has to be loaded to data register. Okay. 
then during machine state T4, accumulator is to be loaded with sum of accumulator and data register. So, that we had put in this way, ALU performing add operation on accumulator and data register. Okay. So, for this operation, I need a micro instruction and the control signals that are needed are load data register and output enable of R1. Okay. For this micro operation to be executed during machine state T4, the control signals which are required are load accumulator, okay. then we need ALU add control signal, because when this control signal is made equal to 1, then only ALU will perform add operation. Simultaneously, we also need output enable of ALU. <coughs> because from the ALU, output of the ALU is going to the common data path. So, I also have to acti activate output enable of ALU. Okay. So, if I say that this load data register within this assignment, I put assign load data register to control signal say C8. Okay. Output enable of R1 <coughs> to C9 load accumulator to C10 ALU add because I have not used any of these control signals before. In the control signals that we have considered so far, these control signals are not considered. Okay. So, I have to have new bits for generation of these control signals. So, for ALU add, I need C11, then output of enable, output enable of ALU is C12. Okay. So, I put it this way, I have to have bits <coughs> C8, C9, C10, C11, C12. Okay. Then during machine state T3, the bits which are needed are C8 and C9. So, I put these two bits equal to 1. The remaining bits will be 0. Similarly, on this side, other bits will also be 0. Okay. So, it starts from bit number C0. So, all these bits will be equal to 0. Right? During machine state T4, I need the control signals load accumulator. So, that is C10, which will be equal to 1. I need ALU add control signal C11, that will also be equal to 1. Output enable of ALU, that is also equal to 1. Okay. The remaining bits will be equal to 0. Okay. So, you find that for execution of this instruction add R1, I need two micro instructions. So, it is a program, micro program consisting of two micro instructions. Right? And this will be the value of L. So, L will now be this value which has been generated by the external address generator. 
Okay. And similarly, we can also fill up these values. Here, what will be the next address field? In this particular case, next address field will be L plus 1 and the mode field will be equal to 1. Okay. And after that, next address field will be 0, 0. Mode field will also be equal to Y0. Mode field will be equal to 1 because the next address field will come from here only. Okay. So, this is a micro program which executes the instruction adder 1. So, I can also put it this way that a task is executed by an program which is a set of instructions. Every instruction itself is executed by a micro program which consists of a number of micro instructions. Right? So, what is the advantage that we gain if I go for micro programming? You find that because this whole thing is loaded in a control memory and the control memory can be programmed as per requirement. Okay. So, if I find that today I decide that the control signals are to be generated in some sequence, but the next day I find that the sequence in which I have generated the control signals, they are not proper. I should change the control signals, sequence of control signals. Okay. So, if I want to change the sequence of control signals, when I have the hardware control circuit generator, then the entire hardware has to be changed. Okay. Whereas, if I do it using the microprogramming, where the sequence in which the control signals are to be generated and how the control signals are to be generated, because that is a program loaded into a control memory, keeping every circuit same, if I simply change the control memory, the sequence of generation of the control signals will be different. So, I have more flexibility. Okay. Of course, you can question that when it is a design of CPU, I cannot change the uh, control memory within the CPU any time. Okay. But still in that case, it is the design flexibility that you have. Okay. But does it have only advantage? Sir, speed yeah. Speed wise, this will be slow because for generation of any control signal, I have to read the memory content. Okay. So, because it is software in nature, it will be slower than hardware control unit. But the advantage is, it is more flexible, gives flexibility while designing. And the second advantage is, it is more compact. Because the whole lot of hardware control circuit is now put in just the control memory. Okay. So, it is compact and flexible, but speed wise it will be slower. It will be more accurate than that. Okay, that accuracy does not matter much. Okay, so with this, we take a break. Okay, now let us see another aspect that is designing of micro instructions. <coughs> Till now, we have seen that in the control memory every location will have the number of bits which are same as the number of control signals that you have within the system. Okay. Now, in any system, I can have hundreds of control signals. That means, our control memory, every location must have hundreds of bits which makes the control memory very big. Okay. So, we have to think, is there any way by which the number of bits in every location in the control memory can be reduced. One of the simplest way is, instead of directly putting the control signals in the control memory, you encode the control signals and put the encoded uh, control signal in the control memory. So, that way, if I have n number of control signals present in a system, the number of bits in every location in the memory 
that we will need is log <coughs> of n to the base 2 and then ceiling function of this. So, that will be the number of bits needed in every location in the control memory. But this has a disadvantage that is while analyzing the instructions that we have, we have seen that in any cases we need more than one control signals to be activated simultaneously. Okay. Now, when we are encoding the control signals and putting them as encoded bit stream in the control memory, that means after reading a location from the control memory to generate the control signals, I have to decode that encoded bit stream. So, that has to pass to a decoder. In case of a decoder, generating more than one decoder output active simultaneously is not possible. So, that puts a restriction that if we have fully encoded bit stream to represent the control signals, I can generate only one control signal at a time. <coughs> I cannot generate more than one control signal at a time. So, these are two extreme cases. One case is where every bit is assigned to a control signal which we call as horizontal microprogramming. <coughs> this is called horizontal microprogramming. So, let us take an example to see how the design can be done. I take a very simple example with only say 4 micro instructions. So, let us take an example. <coughs> so, here I consider 4 micro instructions say I 1, I 2, I 3, and I 4. So, suppose we have these 4 micro instructions and the control signals which are activated by I 1 are let us say A, B, C, and G. Okay? The control signals which are activated by I 2, let us say those are A, C, E and H. Control signals which are activated by I 3, let us say those are A, D and F. Okay. And the control signals which are activated by I 4, let us say those are C, B, C and F. Okay. So, find that for this example, the total con number of control signals that we have are A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. These are the total control signals that we have for this example, out of which a 1 activates A, B, C and G, I 2 activates A, C, E and H, I 3 activates <coughs> A, D and F, okay. I 4 activates B, C and F. Okay. Now, before designing the micro instructions for this particular example, let me uh, define one more term that is maximal compatibility class. So, for that what I will do? I will take every compatibility classes from A from step 2, where we have compatibility classes containing all the compatibility classes containing 2 control signals each and try to insert another control signal in that still maintaining the compatibility property. Okay. So, if I do that in step S3, you find that I will have a number of compatibility <coughs> classes like B, D, E, B, D, H, D, E, G, 
जी डी जी एच ई एफ जी एंड एफ जी एच ओके सो बाय एनालाइजिंग दिस आई कैन फाइंड आउट दैट ओके सो अगेन once i find out the compatibility classes containing three control signals each again i remove from the previous step all the compatibility classes which is subset of some compatibility class in step s3 right so here you find that except cd all other compatibility classes can be removed because they are subsets of some compatibility class in step number s4 step number s3 okay so once i have this s3 then i should go for next step s4 where we'll try to find out compatibility classes containing four control signals each and here we will find that i cannot insert any other control signal with any of the classes in s3 say for example bde with bde i cannot include a with bde i cannot include b is already there so i don't have to consider that i cannot include c because b and c they becomes incompatible okay <coughs> i'll try to find out the columns containing only one cross if i get any column cross which contains only one cross that indicates that the row where the cross is present that is the only maximal compatibility class which contains that control signal there is no other com maximal compatibility class containing the same control signal okay now what is our aim our aim is i will try to remove some of the maximal compatibility classes to get the minimal cover such that the minimal cover will contain all the all the control signals now while trying to eliminate some of these maximal compatibility classes these are the compatibility classes okay such that corresponding to that in a column i have only one cross those compatibility classes cannot be removed because if i remove that compatibility class in that case those control signals will also be removed so in a minimal cover those compatibility classes must be retained so these are the compatibility classes which are called essential compatibility classes and in our minimal cover we must retain the essential compatibility classes okay so you find that by studying this <coughs> i have two columns the column corresponding to a and the column corresponding to c these are the two columns which contain a single cross <coughs> okay 